you may be wondering why i'm wearing barcelona jersey i'm talking about one international footballer the former captain of the black stars of ghana i'm wearing the jersey of the football club i like i don't say that i don't like black stars i'm just wearing my football jersey of my club i'm godwin selassie dako and this is make it legal on the 31st of october 2023 her leadership justice hafiz sata amaleboba misses delivered a judgment in the case of Asamo Jan versus Gifted Jan. What are the facts of this case? What issues were before the court? And what did the court finally say? I think you would like to know all of this. Make it the former captain of the Black Stars of Ghana, Asamo Jan, divorced his wife gift to john and in this video i present to you all you need to know about the judgment delivered by the court and the case title first of all is asamo john versus gifty john i think it's good to know what the case title because it tells you who the parties are so i'm going to delve into the video but what am i going to be talking about number one i'll give you the facts of the case then i'll also try to explain to you the case of each party what is asamo john's case and what is his wife's case then also i would try to present to you the issues that were addressed by the court and after taking all these issues we would also look at the judgment of the court and i believe there are a few lessons we can pick from the judgment as people who are married or those who are yet to marry we all can pick some lessons from this video so be sure to stay to the end and pick the lessons i'll leave the lessons in the last minute of this video so let's get straight into it but before i give you the full facts of the case it's important i mentioned that i'm doing this video simply as a commentary and a, a review just for educational purposes and then no other intention is intended so i want to believe that the review i'm doing is going to help you understand the case and what really happened and then you can pick some lessons from it so if you are new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe to the channel you see the subscription button there click on it and then subscribe to the channel i'm waiting for you to click it then we'll continue have you clicked it i've been tired waiting for you please click it do it right now i've done it done it thank you so the brief facts of this case are that asamo jan the popular footballer you know is an international footballer of high repute he was the captain of the black stars of ghana and the wife at the time was working in a hotel called wangara hotel in accra and both parties met at that hotel 2003 and that meeting led to a relationship between them so they've been in a relationship together for many years and out of the relationship they have two male children so sometime in 2013 the parties decided to get married to each other so they contracted a monogamous marriage a marriage under the ordinance after the marriage they live in their separate places and tend to visit each other often and then in the course of the marriage they have one last child who is a female so they have three children in all now what is the petitioner's case before the court so as a more case is that number one he met gifted jan and they both were in a relationship for many years and later they got married under the ordinance in 2013 at the time they got married he did not know that the respondent was already married to somebody else and had a valid marriage between her and that other person who he called eugene so Eugene was already married to Gifty before Asamojan got married to Gifty. So this is Asamojan's case. Asamojan produced the evidence of the marriage that he claimed existed between Gifty and Eugene before the court. The marriage certificate was produced to the court as evidence that indeed Gifty was lawfully married to another man at the time that he got married to her. On the basis of discovering that Gifty had already married someone else, Asamoja was doubting whether or not he was the father of the three children. So he brought a petition to the court and asked the court that, number one, cancel the marriage between us because it was never valid and it never existed. Number two, order that the DNA test be conducted on these children for us to tell who the legitimate parent or the father is. So the court was to order the DNA test to be conducted on the three children. Uh, he also requested the court to order the maintenance provision to be made for the children. Then he also asked for any other relief the court may deem fit 
and proper to ground. So with this case that Asamojan filed in his petition, he served it on Gifty and Gifty now has to respond to it. And in divorce proceedings, you respond to a petition by filing an answer. So Gifty filed an answer in response to the petition. And what was her response in the answer she filed? Because she also wanted some things from Asamojan, she filed an answer with what we call counterclaim. Counterclaim is that I also have claims against you and I want the court to order you to do those things for me or to give or to do ABCD for me. Even though you are the one who brought the case and then you, you, you are expecting the court to order me to do some things for you, I also want to respond to that petition, but I also have some things to ask against you. So I file a, a counterclaim. So she filed an answer and a counterclaim. And in this answer, she responded to the facts of petitioner's case. She said that, number one, yes, it is true we met at Wangara Hotel and we developed a relationship and later got married. It is very true. And then we got married under the ordinance in 2013. However, at the time I was married in 2013, I was never validly married to any other man. She said that I was even a virgin at the time we were together. So how could you say that someone else had married me? The person married me and never slept with me and never had sex with me. She said, it doesn't make sense. According to Gifty Jan, she was ill and needed the medical attention. And the hospitals in Ghana were unable to provide the medical attention that she required. So she had to go to another country to get that medical attention. And the foster mother at the time uh, advised her to go to Italy for the medical uh, treatment. So that required that, you know, she, she needed to get a visa to be able to go to Italy to get the medical attention. Eugene was in Italy and Eugene, once Eugene gets married to Gifty, then Eugene can ask Gifty to come to Italy. And when she gets to the Italy, then she will do the medical examination. So she said that, yes, the only reason she had that marriage with Gifty, with Eugene, was to, uh, to go to Italy for medical purposes. And as Samoja was aware that uh, she got married to Eugene for purposes of medical treatment. So the marriage between her and Gifty, which happened in 2002, was just an arranged marriage, connection marriage, you know, visa application marriage. It was just something they put up to get a visa, uh, to get a marriage certificate to, able to get a visa approved for her. So indeed, it went through and the visa was approved. And she got to Italy and I took the medical treatment and then was back in Ghana. And Asamo Jan was aware that she was not in fact married to the person, but only had to arrange a marriage of a sort to be able to get a visa approved. To go to italy for the medical treatment so there is no way asamoja can use that marriage as a basis to say that the marriage between her and asamojan was never a valid marriage and the court should annul it so she said that the court should dissolve the marriage now between them she also doesn't want the marriage between herself and asamojan again said so the court to dissolve it but in her response she also said that at the time that she had done this arranged marriage or the connection marriage with eugene eugene has a girlfriend and Eugene went on to actually get married to that girlfriend. So why would someone just be saying that, you know, Gifty went to marry Eugene and did not tell him. And because of that, the marriage between Asamojan and Gifty avoid. So these were her responses in her answer. So what does she want the court to grant her by way of remedies or reliefs? What did she also say the court should give her or, or make as an order in her favor? She lists a number of things. Number one is that the court should dissolve the marriage between them. Number two is that the court should grant her all the three children. The children were 17, 11, and 9 years old. The court should grant all of them to her. It means that the court should allow that the three children stay with her. And then access could be given to Asamojan to visit them. Or the children could visit him. But they should be staying with her forever. That is custody. She also asked the court to order Asamojan to pay her 5,000 US dollars every month for the maintenance of the home. The home here means herself and the children to maintain the home, $5,000 each month. Mm -hmm. And then she also asked the court to order Samojan to pay the cost of her litigation in court. And then she also said that the court should order Samojan to pay her 1 million US dollars, a financial provision or financial settlement. And then she also went on to ask the court to order Samojan to give her 
the house they have in the United Kingdom as her personal property forever. And then the last one, she asked the court to order Asamojan to give her 50% of all the shares Asamojan has in about six companies that Asamojan has shares in. Then also she asked the court to order Asamojan to give her 50% of six houses Asamojan owes in, in the country, including lands and houses and all of that. Six of them were listed by her and said, you know what, all these six houses give me 50% of each because we've been together and married together. Now the marriage is no more. We are called it because they were called at the time we were married. So now that we are going our separate way, let me take half. You take half, we go. The court should order Samojan to give her 50%. Then she also prayed the court to grant her 50% share in six cars that Samojan has. So you see all these six cars, you know all these six cars? He listed all, she listed all of them and said, you know, all of them, 50% each. If this one is worth $50,000, I should take $25,000. So she wanted 50% share of these properties. And she also mentioned that Samojan has a printing press. And then whatever share she has in that company, she is entitled to 50% share. So these are the things she wanted from Samojan. Would the court grant her 50% share? Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Drop your comments. Let me know what you think. So which issues did the court address? or answer from the cases of the parties the issues that the court resolved are a lot but for this video we have decided to focus on four main issues the court resolved the first one is was the marriage between eugene and giftijan valid the second issue is under what circumstances could the court declare a marriage null under Ghanaian law the third one is is the marriage between the petitioner that is samojan and the respondent Giftijan not in law. The fourth, but not the least, is how much should the court pay as maintenance to Giftijan? And under this one, we'll also discuss whether or not the court should pay financial provisions and also give all the 50% shares the woman wanted to her. So on the first issue as to whether or not the marriage between Gifty and Eugene and Eugene was a valid marriage, the court said yes, it is a valid marriage under the law. Although this marriage was just a connection marriage, it was just done because of a visa application process, or it was just done to, in order to get a visa approved, the court said that it is still a valid marriage. In other words, if you have a marriage just to get a visa approved for you, don't think that it was just for visa, so it is not a valid marriage. The law respects it as a valid marriage any day, any time. You may call it connection marriage, visa application marriage, you can even call it arranged marriage, any name you give to it, once you have followed the due process of contracting that marriage and it is legally correct in law that you have gone through the procedure the end result is that you will have a valid ordinance marriage so the court said that yes the marriage between eugene and the respondent is a valid marriage in law now in line with the court's response to this first issue whether or not the marriage between eugene and gifty was valid the court also considered the issue of whether or not at the time of marrying eugene uh, gifty was a, a major as it was an adult who can marry was beyond the age of 18 years but the court found out that um, she was at the time 17 years of age and 17 years you cannot contract a valid marriage in law but what happened was that the court said that it, when you are a minor and you contract marriages of that nature the marriage is voidable in other words it is not invalid just because you are a minor or one of you is a minor it is valid until one of you takes step to say that the court should declare it void valid on set aside it is valid until a court orders it that it is now invalid. So, in other words, the marriage between Eugene and the respondent, although at the time they had that marriage, Gifty was 17 years, so the court said that it is still valid because none of them has taken steps to declare it null. Now, what is the implication of this ruling by the court? Between what is the implication for Gifty as well as Eugene? So, the court is saying that Gifty, the marriage you had with Eugene is a valid marriage. In other words, that marriage is still valid under Ghanaian law. It's still res to be respected as a valid marriage. So what it means is that Gifty cannot have another marriage because of the subsisting monogamous marriage between her and Eugene. Again, Eugene can also not have another marriage. That would be valid in law because of the subsisting marriage. So this is quite critical because the two of them are declared to not have a valid marriage between the two of them. And that marriage is valid. In other words, they cannot contract another marriage until they take steps to dissolve this marriage which was the arranged marriage between them that is where the court said that gifty 
could not be legally married or validly married to Asamojan because at the time of marrying Asamojan, Gifty had a valid marriage between herself and Eugene. Now, another implication to is that any existing marriage that Eugene has now or will have tomorrow between himself and another person will not be valid in law until he, Eugene, and Gifty take steps to dissolve the marriage that they have contracted, which was the connection marriage. Another implication also is that Gifty cannot marry another person or could not have had a valid marriage with Asamojan until she dissolves the marriage she has with Eugene. In simple terms, neither party could actually have any valid marriage under Ghanaian law until that existing marriage between them, whether they like that marriage or not, whether it was of visa application purposes or not, is dissolved by the court. So the court first response to that first issue was that indeed, yes, the marriage was valid in law and should be respected as a valid marriage. The second answer was the marriage between Asamojan and Gifty, one that can be nullified. In other words, under what grounds could the court nullify the marriage between parties under Ghanaian? The court listed five of the grounds that marriages could be declared null. So under Ghanaian law, from what the judge said, which is what the law says in Ghana, if the following five elements are present in any marriage that is contracted by parties under the law, the court can declare it to be null to be void, to be invalid, to be of no effect. It doesn't have legal force. It is not proper marriage. The court can declare. So number one is that they refused to have sex after they got married. And that refusal was because one party willfully refused to engage in sexual intercourse after the marriage. If the one who refused to engage in sexual intercourse after the marriage is the respondent, the one who the case was brought against, the court could declare the marriage as void. The second ground that the court could declare the marriage void is that if at the time of the marriage either of the party was of unsound mind or was insane the court to say no you you cannot be saying marry someone who is insane and then the marriage be valid therefore the court to declare the marriage void the third one is if at the time of the marriage the woman who is to be married was pregnant to somebody else it makes sense that if someone else got her pregnant then the man who is now coming to marry her should not even be allowed to continue so the court to say that the marriage they have now continued Ignoring the pregnancy she has with another man is void. The marriage is void. Top one is if either of the parties is suffering from an incurable venereal disease at the time of the marriage, the court will say that the marriage is void. Maybe you have some disease that could affect the sexual organs and it's incurable and it's a venereal disease. At the time of the marriage, the court will say that the marriage you have contracted, ignoring that disease, is void. Will you marry someone who is HIV positive? The last one is the fifth one, which is that if the party you are marrying, you marry him or her under a false name, the person presented herself to you as Kukumenu or Kukumensa, after marriage, find out that, ah, the person is either called Kujo Menu, <laughs> then the marriage will be declared. Please, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We need you to subscribe. And you see this like button, you see this one? If you like the video, please click on it. Click it to like the video. And then after that, share with a friend. Share it on WhatsApp. Share it on your Facebook. Share it in your groups. Let a friend get to know about it. The third question the court has to answer was, now, having stated all the grounds that a marriage could be declared void or null, is the marriage between Asamojan and Gifty void? Because of what we have said and all the court have said, could the court now say the marriage is indeed void? The court said, yes we think it is void because at the time you guys got married gifty you had a marriage with someone else it was an arranged marriage it was a marriage for visa application purposes it was a marriage that was connection marriage but it has met the requirements of ordinance marriages and therefore it's a valid marriage so once you have a valid marriage you cannot marry another person in the marriage you have with asamojan was never valid it was never there. The court declared it as if it never existed. Therefore, the court granted a relief that the marriage between Asamojan and Giftijan is void. Ab initio. What does that even mean? From the very beginning, it has been void. So the fourth question the court answered was whether or not maintenance should be given to the woman now that the court declares the marriage to be void. Should a provision be made for the woman and the children and the household they will now live in to be maintained monthly? The woman wanted 5,000 US dollars as maintenance fee the court looked at everything and, and came to a conclusion that 
25,000 Ghana cities was sufficient to be the maintenance fee that Samojan will pay every month to the woman for the maintenance of the home. The court also ordered Asamojan to transfer to the woman a parcel of land that he has in Afienya, in Accra. So that land was to be given to the woman as part of the property settlement. The court also ordered that two vehicles should be given to the woman as part of the property settlement. So um, she got 25,000 Ghana cities for monthly maintenance fee. She got a parcel of land at Afienya. She also got two vehicles. Uh, even though she wanted to get more of other properties that the court granted her, those are the ones the court thought was just in the circumstances to grant. Should the court order Asamojan to be 50% of the shares he has in the companies, the six companies to the gifty? Should the court order Asamojan to pay 50% of her prop of his properties to the woman? What do you think? Answer that question in the comment section. Let me know what you think. If you were the court, would you have ordered Asamojan to pay 50% of his properties to the woman? What do you think? Let me hear it in the comment section. Another question for you is, should the court order Samojan to pay one, uh, 1 million USD to Gifty as financial provision? 1 million United States dollars. Should the court do so? If you were the judge, would you have done so? Let me know what you think. The court has already decided that she was not entitled to that money and she wasn't going to give her. But what do you think? One of the things the woman also wanted was that the court should order Samojan to pay for the cost of her litigation. But the court said that no, as someone just brought the case to court to nullify the marriage. And the court has agreed that marriage should nullify. Why should he now pay you the cost for the litigation again? So the court refused that application or that prayer of the woman. So this is the end of the review of the case. I believe you picked few lessons from it. This case, which is a judgment of the court, is to be respected by all persons. It has a number of principles of law that must be applied or must be obeyed by all persons. And it would affect your marriage, my marriage, our marriages. So it is important that you pick some lessons. Now, watch out for my next video where I outline 10 lessons from legal principles outlined by the court in the case of Samuel Jan versus Kitty Jan. Thank you for staying with me to the end of this video. I really appreciate your subscription and your like and your share. I want to encourage you to do more of it. If you are new, you are yet to subscribe, please click on the subscription button, subscribe to the channel. And also share the video with someone and like the video. We are happy to hear your comments in the comment section. Keep them coming. I'm Gordon Selassie Dabu. And this is Make It Legal. Boss. Make it legal.